Good afternoon. A uh, couple things from from Saturday. We had talked uh, before we went on the trip and early in the week about margin for error was going to be really small. It is in general in conference play, and, and you, you kind of see that uh, through the first week of, of conference games. And the simple things, we had to win the explosive play battle and we had to win the turnover battle. We weren't able to do that, and, and you can't give up two non – uh, offensive touchdowns um, and we didn't do a good enough job when we had the opportunity in the first two drives we drove the ball really well but penalties kicked us back out of the uh, in goal to goal situations and we get field goals and field goals I say it all the time field goals will never beat you and, and sure enough um, we kicked two field goals and felt really good being up six nothing and then um, forced them into a field goal which was good and then obviously the last two minutes of the half um, we turned the ball over a couple times, and we needed to shut them down that last one uh, and try to go into half 13 to six, but we didn't, and it was 17 to six, and then uh, uh, didn't have good things happen in the second half, and and so now it's our job as coaches, we got to get them to respond, and I'm confident in the leadership in the, in the football team uh, that they will respond. Um, we've got kind of a short week coming back at uh, 5 a.m. And, and then and rolling again like we, we do uh, with an early morning start. But that's um, that's the schedule, and we've got we've to be prepared for it and be ready for it. So I'm confident in our older guys uh, and, and leaders making sure that uh, uh, our focus is good, uh, that we have a good week of prep. We're playing a really good football team in Oklahoma State too. What's kind of the, the biggest thing that you've seen from Avery in the short time as far as just responding? Um, I thought he responded really well, um, you know, from week one to week two, week two to week three. And um, it, it was good to see him play really well against Arizona after um, playing playing okay at, at Tulane. And I'm confident that he'll respond this week. But it can't just be Avery. We, we've got to be better around him collectively. we got to be better um, in complementary football. we got to be better – uh, on the offensive side around him, but we got to be better uh, on defense to help him. And, and guys, we're not getting what BYU got. They had three short fields. We didn't get our offense a short field. We've got to find some ways to get the ball out and get some interceptions and get some strips in the uh, on defense. And then now that you've gotten a chance to kind of look at film, is there anything about your guys' performance on Saturday that surprises you more than others? Other than the fact that we just didn't respond from the two minutes that really turned the game around, uh, honestly, um, and that's that's our job as coaches. It's my job to make sure that we do respond, and so um, that's going to be the message today. We haven't really seen them, but that's going to be the message today: is how do we respond? Um, because I was frustrated, just like some of the players were, just like fan base. Everybody was frustrated that we didn't respond to the poor end of the first half. You couldn't do anything about it. It happened, and we just didn't respond. All right, Chris, you guys haven't lost consecutive games in more than two years. When you go into these games, when you're coming off a loss, do you handle the team? Do you handle the schedule any differently to get them fired up? Um, I, he, when you say that, A, I didn't know that, um, so thanks. Um, and, B, it's got to come from within. It, it has to come. I mean, coaches are, are, are one thing, but it's got to come from within – um, with our leadership and with our guys uh, of taking ownership and, and, and raising their level of play and raising their level of preparation. You bet. Us as coaches have to continue to push the right buttons. Um, but that's going to be the interesting thing of how we respond. And I've never been of uh, this game so much more important than that one or this game or we can't wait to play a game in November, whatever it may be. You can never get ahead of yourself and talk about those things. you got to work on the task at hand. And for us, it's a big task this week. Braden Lofton, where he's at? Yeah, Lofton will be out for a few weeks. Um, lower body injury. It's not season ending, which is positive, but um, no, Braden won't be won't be playing for a few weeks. I also wanted to ask about going up against Mike Gundy. It seems like you two have had some pretty good uh, chess matches chess matches against each other in the past. What just is difficult against going against Coach when you know uh, he might pull out some new tricks? For yeah. Him? Um, you know, I got some have so much respect for Mike for being in the business and, and having the success, the sustained success at one place. Um, it's pretty cool to see, and, and tons of respect for he and his program. But it's still, it's Kansas State against Oklahoma State, and um, I, I know that they're going to be really well coached. Uh, I know that it's going to be a really physical game. 
Um, both teams know each other pretty well. Um, and so it, it's still going to come down to the same things with turnovers, with red zone success, with explosive plays, with you know, limiting mental errors, uh, and, and it's going to be a battle between the two teams. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your your team offensively with the run game and where you feel like you're at there because it that's in a game where there were some inconsistencies it just seems like you're running the ball pretty consistently these days. Yeah, we're having success rushing the football, but um, you know we're everybody knows we're not a we would rather play from the lead and um, you know when when you get down you cannot become one dimensional that's for sure you cannot become one dimensional we f we figured that out two weeks ago when we won and we had the lead um, that you can't be one dimensional so we still have to be uh, balanced um, and when we got behind it it you know we were they were able to get they were giving us the run because they were playing too high deep too high safety look um, we just got to have we got to have better balance I think. Uh, early on in, in games, and I say that with all respect, we had good balance. We didn't get it in the dang end zone. The whole first half, I thought we had really good balance. But when you can't stick it in the end zone and then they get the lead, um, yeah, your runs are going to be fine, but you're not going to be able to throw the ball as much because they're playing the pass. I wanted to ask, too, about Oklahoma State. Last year really ran the ball quite well. Mm -hmm. This year it's been a little bit more of a struggle. I'm wondering what you think about that and, and um, just kind of their yeah. offense in general and how difficult it might be to prepare for. Yeah, it's really difficult um, because Ollie Gordon's so good. You, you, you have to try to control him. Um, and if you do um, commit more people, it's a pretty simple game with them. If you're going to commit a lot of guys to the run, which, which teams have – they're going to throw the football against you, and I think they're throwing for an awful lot of yards, and Bowman's uh, playing at a, at a really good level. And their wide receivers are talented um, and been around there for a while, so they know their system really well. But uh, we have to do a good job of knowing what we're going to give them and limit that because you can't say, well, we're going to take away the run. Well, they're going to throw it for 375, and we're not going to have success. And we've got to understand what our weakness is to each defense Um but when you look at them, they know what they're doing. They've got so many of those veteran kids back in the O-line, a lot of wideouts back, an experienced quarterback, um, one of the best running backs in college football. It'll be a big challenge for us, and, and it's going to be a simple thing as far as you better be get off blocks and you better be able to tackle, and, you, and they're going to complete passes, and you better make tackles. Coach, going back looking at the film, what were your thoughts on how you guys approached those final two minutes of the first half? I mean, nobody expects DJ to fumble. Yeah. But then you come back, and you, instead of just trying to get out of there, you, you throw the ball down the field. I just yeah. thought it was interesting. Yeah, um, you're right on the first cent, right? I mean, we're running the ball to get a first down, and the ball pops out, and that's a touchdown, and no, nobody expected that to happen. It was a screen play that we threw the interception on, and we kind of lost sight of where the back was. Um, with some linemen, and then they dropped a lineman. So it wasn't a down-the-field throw. It was a, a screen pass to try to get us going because we we didn't be easy to take a knee, but what message am I sending to the football team if we take a knee? Um, we didn't execute a screen pass, um, and they picked it off. And then I guess the bigger thing on that is, okay, that happened. Okay, bow up defense, force them into a field goal, and it's 13-6. to six rather than 17-6. to six. Those things didn't happen. And once again, we can keep talking about it all we want, but we can't, you know, pretty soon we got to move on. Um, also, was this, despite what happened, was this a really valuable lesson for Avery and a new center yeah. about being on the road? I mean, Tulane was a road game, but this was different. Yeah, this was a, a lot different. And, and uh, yeah, we had too many false starts. Um and um, we had a delay a game, and a couple of them were on uh, were on the center exchange with the false starts. A couple of them were on interior guys. We just killed ourselves with penalties, and the other time we have holding um, when we're inside the one. Um, you know things that you can't do at home, and you sure as heck can't do it on the road where the crowd gets more into it. So yeah, we'll find out what kind of learning experience it was with with how we respond. The history of the program under you is when you suffer one of these losses, for example. 2022 against Tulane, you guys respond. Mm -hmm. um, I know you haven't had much time with your players yet, but do you feel like this will be a similar situation? 
we'll we'll find out. Every group's different, you know. Um, we had a bunch of resilient guys in, in 22 that uh, responded off of a tough loss there, responded off of a tough loss at TCU. Um, you're right. I'm proud of the fact that our guys have responded uh, in the past, but what's the past is the past. Today's today, and how are we going to respond? Not Saturday. How are we going to respond today and have a good practice and, and realize that, yeah, we've got to correct some things, and, and sometimes correction is constructive criticism, and it's not personal, but we've got to correct some things too. You didn't give up a whole lot of yards defensively, but you talked about the need to create turnovers. Yeah. Were you guys not aggressive enough, do you think, or is it just kind of the luck of the draw? It's a mindset. Or? I think more than anything, it's not the luck of the draw for sure, Arnie. I mean, it, it's you, you got to have a mindset that, that you got to pop the thing out and you got to get it stripped. Um, you know, we gave up a flea flicker, and we knew they were going to run trick plays, and that was a big play. Um, we gave up a couple things in man coverage with some pick routes where we know we're going to get picked, and you got to fight through it. Um, but, you know, you're right. They didn't have many yards, but they were critical yards, and we had to stop people in the red zone, and they had – couple short drives, I get it. They had three short drives off of mis uh, mistakes that we made. But those could be nine points and not 21 points. And so um, short drives are, or not, they're, they're drives for touchdowns. And it, nobody cares what the stats are. I've never been a stats guy. Nobody cares what the stats are. Did you win and how did you win? And did you lose and how did you lose? And biggest thing we lost on because we turned the ball over and we were not very good on either side of the red zone. The wide receivers have, I guess, struggled to be a little bit more consistent this season. Mm -hmm. uh, what's sort of been the biggest reason for that and, and how do you fix that heading into the rest yeah, of the conference? Just got to keep working. Um, we've gotten better. We're, we're doing some good things, but we've got to be more consistent. Um, but that's, once again, that's, that's across the board at, at every spot. Uh, that BYU threw more two high looks, more cover two. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you guys sort of took a little bit too long to respond to that and, and sort of find mm -hmm. counters to that? No, they were ahead is why they did it. When it was a normal game and they weren't ahead, we were doing what we wanted to do and having success but didn't get in the end zone. Then when they got the lead, they changed the narrative of being able to run too high, and that's – Typically, what you do when you have a lead, you, you don't you just don't give up the big play, and so um, you know credit to those guys. They did what they had to do to get the lead, and once they got the lead, they knew how to play. With the the punt return for a touchdown, was it was it just the muff that kind of got things yeah. in disarray and, and led to yeah? Because it, it could have been a touchdown for us or a ball inside the the three or five. You don't practice a lot of situations where it's a muff and the ball's bouncing around and everybody keeps their lane integrity. We didn't keep our lane integrity. But if the ball's still on the ground, I'd have been upset that four guys didn't converge to the football. And you could see we were in great shape. That ball got bouncing around and everybody squeezed. And when everybody squeezed and that kid went around, we had two guys knock each other off because we were all fighting to force it back or fighting for, for leverage or contain it. Two guys go down. Um, that's probably the biggest learning of the whole thing on the field is what happened there. The cover two, um, the, the strips, um, the red zone inefficiencies. Um, that's probably the easiest and best learning thing, uh, learning as – and something happens like that, you got to keep your lane integrity. And that's that's a you know, Coach Katzer, we're fortunate to have him here. Nate's a phenomenal special teams coach. And, and he's like, boy, that, that you, just, you don't prepare for that a lot. But we've got to teach off it for, for sure because um, um, added to the already misery we were going through. Um, maybe a positive here. Chris Tennant goes out. Hits every field goal you asked him to make. Yeah. Do you think he's kicking better this season? You know, two things came out of that. Um, he's kicking the ball better, and he's kicking it with confidence. And the other thing is, after the first kickoff, we flipped to Simon. And Simon kicked the ball as well as anybody's kicked off the ball that we've had in my time here. You know, with um, Zentner, it was out of the end zone most of the time. And I think some of the 
wear and tear on Chris, that helped him just focus on field goals because Simon blasted balls either through the end zone or the one that they returned with Simon had such great hang time that we knocked him down at about the 17 or 18 yard line. So um, pleased to see the the progression of Simon. He's doing a really good job, and we need to continue to lean on him. How good has Brendan Mott been? Mott's been really good, um, and we're playing him a lot more. Uh, last year, we probably sp split time with him with the, all the other guys we have, and we still have a lot of guys, but he and Stuff are the oldest two. Stuff was banged up a little bit last week, and, you know, I, I – Talked to Coach Wyatt um, early on in the season of we got to play Brendan more. He's ready for it. He's playing at a high level in the run game, in the pass game. It doesn't matter. It's He's not a situational guy. He's an every-down defensive end. And Mott's taken that personally of I need to be an every-down defensive end, and I want to stay in the game on first down. I want to stay in the game, in a, game on third down. Uh, and he's playing it like that. He's playing at a really high level. We've spelled him some to stay fresh, but by far and away, he's taken more reps uh, uh, than anybody in the def defensive line. But he's earned all those reps because of how he's playing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like BYU attacked Marquis Siegel a little bit on Saturday night. Yeah. Did um, they show you something that maybe you didn't realize you need to fix? Um, no, no, not, not necessarily. Um, you know, it, it's goes, everybody's got to play a little bit better. Um, I think our secondary in general has got to play better. I don't think we played our best game in, in the secondary. Um, and I know coach Kleinerman is going to challenge the guys because, um, you know, we, we, we lost our eyes a couple of times and maybe lost some concentration. Um, but, uh, no, I, I think, that Sieg's to tell you he's got to play better, and I know he will. That's one thing is is he, he doesn't have any problem taking it and saying, nope, i got to be better, and he will be. Oklahoma State, um, they've been throwing the ball a lot with success. Yeah. But, look, they have the same offensive line, the same running back, the same quarterback. Is Does that make them just really concerning that they, they can do both even they haven't shown run success? Yeah, I think a lot of people – or saying, do not let Ali Gordon beat you. So you got to put everybody up there. And when you do that against a team as talented and as veteran as those guys are, as and especially as well coached as they are, and the quarterback's been there a long time, or been in college football, I should say, a long time. Uh, I think Wells recruited him back at Tech. Um, that you see these looks, and they're like, okay, we can't block all these guys here. Let's see how you do in one-on-one -on -one coverage against really good wide receivers. And the Presley kid's been there a long time, too. He's a really good player, and they're using him. They're using some of their other wideouts with size that they're just winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups. And when you have those kids that are winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups, sooner or later you're going to say, okay, let's get all these guys out of the box and try to defend those. And then they're going to say, okay, go ahead and do what you got to do. We're now going to pump Ollie at you all day long. And so um, same thing. I, don't, I haven't seen – how the games have all gone for them. I watched a little bit just because we were in the hotel all, all day long in, in Provo. I watched some of that. They were down, and then that kind of changed. I think in Arkansas they were down and, and had to do some different things, which probably enabled them or made them throw the football a little bit more. Um, but, no, I, I think they're really dangerous because they can do both really well run and throw. I know it's way early. How crazy could the Big 12 Conference be this year? Um, yeah, we, we've talked about that from the first week, you know, um, whether it's conference game or a non-conference game. Um, the margin for error is really small, and it's hard to win conference games. And um, there was a couple of them this week that were down to the last play, and that's and probably three of them down to the last play and, and could go either way. And – you know, home, away, um, I don't know if it really matters. If if you're playing at a high level and you don't turn the football over with and you're, and you're keeping the ball in front of you on, on defense, um, you're a tough out. And that's what a lot of teams that, you know, have those close games, that's what they're doing. And so, yeah, this, this year could be wide open. And, and, you know, hey, I watch Utah against Oklahoma State, and they, they're they really good. And I know they didn't play their, their best quarterback, but, wow, those, those guys those guys are really talented. Uh, I wasn't at the game Saturday, but with the environment, 
in the stadium, were you having to look for the other singles on the sideline, or were you able to use the helmet communication? Um, a little bit of both. I mean, we mixed it back and forth um, with using calling it to the quarterback, calling it to the to the linebacker, um, you know. But we were able to get all of our cadences out. You know, we had we had too many mistakes, but uh, it was a factor. Don't get me wrong, but um, we were still able to communicate. Forgive me if I'm wrong. If you've answered about Oklahoma State defense, but what have you seen from them so far? Uh, a little different this year from last year, um, and I, I, they're really good. I know they lost the, the the Oliver kid for a little while. I don't know what his status is, but you've known about that kid for two or three years in the league. Um, I don't see a spot where they're young, inexperienced. They've got a lot of older guys. They're playing really fast. I thought they did a really good job against a terrific Utah team. Um, I, I know that they bled a little bit on some runs, but boy, they, they stuffed them when they had to and gave themselves an opportunity to win. And um, they get after the passer and, and they'll, they tackle really well and they strike you on defense. Um, so same thing. It, it's every week we, we got to play our best game on both sides of the ball and on teams to have our, give ourselves a chance to be successful.